didn't like to write letters, but when I met Sachin in 1990, there were no mobile phones, so no SMSing, no calls. Uh, there were no computers, so no emails. If ever I wanted to call him, and I was studying in um, Grant Medical College, there were those PCO booths, so I had to get out of this huge 46-acre campus, cross Muhammad Ali Road, go to a PCO at 10 in the night, because that's when the rates, you know, the STD rates or ISD rates were less. And I was convinced that the whole place was full of gundas, but I had to go there all on my own, and then with 100 rupees or whatever I had, and then you call, and you know, you see the... It, with every second that you're talking, it's going up, and within one minute, your money is finished. So the best option was to write a letter. So I used to write, and then you have to anticipate, oh, a letter to reach Sydney is going to take 10 days or two weeks. So, you know, you plan ahead, and you send the letter to that place, and then he would get my letter, he would read it, then he would send a letter back to me, and that is the way we communicated most of the time. Yes, breaking news, that Tendulkar was worried about the meter ticking on a telephone call. Hello, I was a meta <laughs> in those days, and I was a medical student. I was not a Tendulkar. Everyone thinks, Anjali, that here's Sachin Tendulkar and everything nice happens to him and the world lays itself open, there's everything happening and yet there are stresses, aren't there? There are insecurities, there are stresses. Yours was the shoulder. Yeah, everyone thinks, you know, to be married to a cricketer, it's such a glamorous life and everything must be wonderful and, you know, you just have to go attend functions and socialize and, you know, that's it. But in reality, it's really, really... It's, it's difficult. Um, one is that a lot of the time your husband is not there, so you have to manage everything on your own. Plus, you know, traveling with kids, it was never easy. There were certain times that we could be there, you know, so to, to plan it with the kids' holidays, to travel, having to look after the kids alone. And my, always my aim was Sachin shouldn't be disturbed in anything. So I used to take the kids and even though he would want to help me, it was more important that he gets to sleep properly because the next day he has to go out and bat. So, I remember taking Sarah to New Zealand when she was less than a year old and with the time difference she would be awake the whole night and you know crying and then Sachin wanting to sleep so I had to go out of the room. So it was, it, it's not as easy and as glamorous as everyone makes it out to be. It's tough. When your husband does badly and India loses, you know you personally feel that you've done something wrong, you don't want to go out, you don't want to face and anyone. Bowlers, and that these bowlers are terrible people. <laughs> exactly. Before we end, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about specifically. And page 80, you'd finally decided to get engaged and your man didn't have the courage to tell his family? No, no. It's not that he didn't have the courage. He did. Look at him <laughs> smiling away. I don't think that was the case. He was. He in told New you Zealand. to go and inform his parents. He was, he was in New Zealand and um, that was when he had just started opening the batting and I, he, he did really well. So he was in a good mood and one day he called me. I was posted at uh, St. George Hospital and he said, I think now we should get engaged. So I said, fine. He says, when I come back um, on my birthday, uh, he was turning 21. He said, we'll get engaged. I said, fine. He said, but there's no time. So you go to my house and you tell my parents. I said, are you sure you want me to go and tell your parents? He said, yeah, yeah, you go and tell. So that's why I had to do it. It's not that he didn't have the courage. Sachin, that was more <laughs> difficult for you to tell your parents I've met this girl than facing the fastest bowlers in the world? Indeed it was. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think I planned all this? I mean, I was in New Zealand happily sitting playing cricket and I said, you have to do it. I am ready to get engaged to you whenever you want. You say tomorrow, I'll do it. No problems. And then rather more, rather more sadly, I mean, it, it's been a happy story before. Let's move on to page 166 and I think, I think Ajit called you to say that, that, that Sachin's father is no more. You called her and said you go and break the news to him, right? And you had to drive and, and break the news to him. That, was that the most difficult journey you've ever undertaken? It, 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 indeed it was. Sarah was again a little baby and in those days we weren't allowed to be the whole time um, with the team so I was away. Ajit called me and he said, I don't want anyone else to tell him, you have to go. So then it was late in the night, my mother drove the car, I held Sara on my lap, we drove all the way back to Leicester. On the way, I called Ajay Jadeja, Robin Singh, I said, you know, make sure that you're there outside Sachin's room, don't allow anyone to put any calls through. And it was late at night and you know, when I knocked on the door and he opened the door, he knew that there was something wrong, otherwise there's no way during a, a tournament I would have gone to his room like that in the night. And then, you know, to tell him, it was like, there was... I mean, it was like he was about to just collapse in front of me. It was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. You better do it. I mean, you think that there's, there's only happiness in careers. Before I, before I say thank you to of you, I want you to tell me one very interesting story because I can't believe that you actually did that. All of India is watching Sachin's last innings. 
a last test match. He bats well. And it's apparent to everybody that there is no India second innings. And you tell him, let's analyze how you got out because you shouldn't get out like that again. Yeah, I mean, I got so much used to talk to him every day about the game. I literally forgot that he is never going to bat again. You forgot? And, yeah. Uh, well, the pleasure was in doing things as, as correctly as possible rather than uh, success or failure. So that's how it just uh, came out, you know, which was been happening over the years. And just did not want him to get out badly. So you actually sat with him and said, okay, let's analyze how I got out? We, we, we no, spoke, spoke on the phone. Yeah. We, we spoke on the phone. Uh, but I said, well, not bad. Okay, if I get to bat in the second innings, I will not do that. <laughs> <coughs> you talk very fondly about about uh, about Ajit in the book. What's what's it been to you having uh, having literally this elder brother walking alongside you? It was almost as if this was the frame, and he was always just outside the frame, visible only to you but to nobody else. And he stayed outside that frame all his life. You know, at times he, he was not visible to me also because uh, so many things that he has done for me <coughs> I've, only, I've only realized that after I've retired and I've heard through someone else so uh, a lot of things I mean uh, right, from, right from the day I started playing cricket he early on he would travel with me and then uh, he would be constantly in touch with me all the time I mean I, I know to put in short that you know he's, he's is uh, we have lived this dream, dream together. Uh, I knew that whenever I went into bat, you know, mentally he was there with me, even though you know we were miles and miles apart. But mentally he was also batting with me there. And whenever I got tired, I'm sure he was also tired. And whenever I was stressed, he was also stressed. It was much easier rather than going actually out there and bat. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know. Whatever, whatever I say and however much uh, I describe, it's, it's not enough because uh, I don't know the full story yet because I'll tell you one more thing. Just after I retired, he had, he had uh, saved or rather kept my first bat in life carefully, had hidden it somewhere and also the first series helmet that I used in Pakistan. Yeah, it's a, it was a bomber bat which he uh, bottle shipped. Was proper bat. It's, it's kept right outside here. Yeah. Okay. The 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 bat that I. The first used, the first yeah. one you ever played with. Yes, first bat of my life. One last question for you: Why did you never celebrate a century? It's it's incredible. In most families, I mean, you score one century, you score two centuries, you never celebrate a century. Well, first few I think. Uh, then I realized that uh, taking out friends to a restaurant and paying the bill was not going to be possible every time. A lot more centuries were to come. No, but on a serious note, uh, I think uh, uh, it was never enough, basically. I just wanted to uh, go him on and on. And not wanting to make him realize that, yes, it's, everything is done. So. And you didn't know that he always wore the same t-shirt when, when you went out to bat because when you wore the t-shirt you scored those 200s in, uh, in Sharjah. So you kept wearing the same t-shirt all the time. Oh yeah, it, uh, it so happened that uh, in Australia when he went through that rough patch in first three days, uh, I thought, no, I have to do something, although I could not. You can't go, go actually go out there and so in what way I can really contribute to it. So. Uh, then it struck me that uh, 1998 was the best uh, uh, year in his life up to that uh, point of time. And he had done wonderfully well in that uh, Sharjah tournament, scoring back to back 100 against Australia. Mm. I had that t shirt with me. You didn't so wear it today. You know, wouldn't it have been perfect if he'd worn that t shirt today and she'd worn that same orange? <laughs> Why didn't you wear the same orange top again? I'm sure you've kept it somewhere. I do. I have it. You have it still? Surprise him one day. Ladies and gentlemen, the two stellar cast, Ajit and Anjali. Uh, Anjali, we need, a, we need a picture. Ajit, we need a photograph of the two of you. So can you just pop back up briefly for a minute?
See, never had a photograph taken. There it is. The things we make people do here. Okay, it's, it's time for that big moment. Before that, can I just thank sponsors 200 Not Out, IT, ITC Maratha, and Collectabilia. Can I also request now for the big moment the publisher's representative, Thomas Abraham? Thomas? Come along, Thomas Abraham who, from, uh, from Hachet, India. He's, he, oh, he's got it in his hand. I wouldn't check that out as well. And general manager of ITC Hotels, Mr. Philip Charodo. Ah, that's correct. Mr. Philip Charodo. There's also the signal for, for, signal for me to get out, and it's all yours. presented to, uh, to Sachin's mother. She couldn't be here today. She's a bit unwell. So the first copy was presented to his, to his mother. Okay, I would like to invite my daughter Sara to be here because uh, we're presenting this copy to somebody really special in my life. Uh, about an individual, you know. Well, um, I guess um, there's so much can be said about an individual, you know, who, uh, in my opinion, would have achieved so much, where um, batmanship is basically concerned, uh, you, you cannot get any better, and especially what he would have um, achie achieved over the years. Certainly, um, I doubt whether in my lifetime I'm going to see... Everything. Live pictures coming to you from the launch of Sachin Tendulkar's tell-all memoir, Play It, playing it my way and it couldn't have been a more stellar ceremony there in Mumbai with all the star cast of those decades of fabulous cricket a billion cricket fans looking on in eager anticipation for little nuggets from this book that have emerged at this sparkling ceremony where Sachin Tendulkar family members and the star cast the dramatis personae really everyone who's been anybody in Indian cricket is there to felicitate the master blaster as he brings out a book that promises to tell all let's go straight across to headlines today is Rasesh Mandari my colleague who's at the ceremony who's been tracking uh, the dramatic run-up to the release of this much anticipated book the book perhaps that is the year's most anticipated publication. Rasesh, what a ceremony in the run-up to the release of Sachin Tendulkar's autobiography, Playing It My Way. Quite an evening, Shiv. You know, this, uh, this book was promising to, to, to bring out stories of Sachin Tendulkar that one had not heard of before. And if this was a teaser of what we saw in this evening, uh, it, it promises to be quite a book, and uh, a book which every Sachin Tendulkar cricket fan, an Indian cricket fan, would want to grab a copy of. Uh, you know, this, for the function, it was quite spectacular. And I think everyone who was here in attendance would have their own special moment. You know, starting from the big four of Indian cricket, Rahul Dravid, Sachin Tendulkar, previous Lakshman, sort of Ganguly right. sharing stage, taking the mix okay. out of each other. Uh, Rasesh, we're going to just uh, go back live now to those pictures where Sachin's in conversation. But if I'm not mistaken, I think my sister-in-law, as we call it, ki antenna zupar ke uske and something happened. I mean, she said, was she really a journalist or something else? There's a lot of journalists here who knew you from the time you were 12, 13 years old. I saw some of them there. Did you ever get... Is, is that an inherent aspect of growing up? of growing up in the game that you learn to play somebody, with playing. Somebody told me I could write a book on medicine, you know, all the injuries because I, I don't think uh, from top to bottom, I, some or the other part has always been injured. And it's not just with me, but uh, I think all the sportsmen, they, have, they carry niggles and you learn to deal with pain. 
and you find ways to to go out there and fight give your best there are tough moments at time i mean i remember i was batting with vvs lakshman in mumbai against australia when i had had my uh, tennis elbow surgery or it was maybe before that i don't remember exactly uh, whether it was before or after but i was batting in the morning and in, in the first over itself my elbow started hurting so badly and uh, the first two test matches i hadn't played so i just prayed to god please don't let me break down right now after this match i'll do whatever but not this this match so i quickly asked for a couple of painkillers and i bit them to pieces thinking that you know this is my medical knowledge but thinking that you know if i bit them then my system would absorb uh, the painkiller much faster and i'd be pain free or little less pain uh, in my elbow and then you know those are the moments where you look back and you sort of you know thank god for not not you know letting me break down there because after that i had to have a major surgery which which kept me away for almost four and a half months but uh, all the sportsmen go through that and mine wasn't uh, i think exceptional thing when your name first appeared in a newspaper you were reprimanded when your name first appeared in a newspaper yeah the person who reprimanded me is sitting here uh achrekar sir i was playing my first inter schools match and i had scored 24 runs and then i was told that you know you score 30 runs your name will appear in the newspaper you know you wouldn't you like to see your name in the newspaper tomorrow morning so this guy was filling up score sheets and and uh, he said best idea from extras we'll add six more runs in your total which will make 30 and we'll deduct those six runs from extras and we are not increasing the actual total 